Before the episode starts, I would like to say I think my microphone has broken during the moving. I don't know what's happened to it, but um, as you can hear, it's not very good anymore. Um, so I would just like to say sorry, because my mic is like this all the way through. And um, I don't know what's happened with it. Enjoy the episode either way. Hello everybody, and welcome back to the Antpod, where today we'll be discussing Ancon 2024. First of all, we've had a slight break. I'm in the middle of moving, I'm still in the middle of moving, I'm not doing it very good, I'm not very quick. But uh, the podcast should return once more for regular Wednesday updates like you've been used to or Wednesday uploads. But today, I'm joined by Lynn and Jake, the regular co-hosts, both of them who attended Ancon. I, of course, also attended Ancon, Lynn's been there twice. Jake and I have been the three times, and uh, starting off with you, Lynn, I hope you're doing well. Uh, how was your second year at Ancon? It was uh, very nice. This this year we actually went a little longer uh, for a holiday in the UK, so we've seen a little bit more of the of England as well during this time. And then we ended off with uh, Endcon, of course, so that was uh, pretty awesome and pretty good week we had. Yeah, and you brought your entire family this year, right? You were a group of four? <laughs> yeah, I bought their tickets, and my mother was really excited, so she also got a shirt. Oh. And, uh, yeah, we, we pretty much uh, because my dad it wasn't it wasn't really much for him because it's too busy and everybody was there just sitting on top of each other and he he, he cannot really talk about end, so it was yeah. a little bit hard for him. So eventually they left early, and uh, Arun and I, my sister. Uh, we just stayed, stayed the whole day. Actually, both days, because there were two days this year. Nah, I think you... Uh, no, maybe it was on the... Uh, maybe it was on the Saturday your dad was. I, I sat there, listened to uh, one of the uh, presentations with your dad in front of me, but... I th- no, what's that on Sunday? Were you were your dad there on Sunday as well? No, I... No, no, it actually, wasn't on Sunday. It I don't think it was. A little bit, but I think mostly Saturday, yes. So, your mother, does she like ants? And what did you, she then think of, of the whole event? Well, they both kind of like ants, but that's purely because I like ants. So, they get excited because I'm excited. So, my dad of, and my mother, actually, as well, often send pictures of the ants that they find in the backyard or in the house oh. in France. <laughs> and, uh, but she, my mother, really liked it. She was very curious to see the different types of ants that ant anting, ant antics has parading around the shop and everything so uh and i really liked that i was explaining uh could explain the different species and everything and the polyraka setup and uh the i'm not gonna pronounce them the the green weavers and everything so uh, yeah <laughs> I, uh, uh, yeah they, they liked it i think and the different talks of course and, yeah pretty much like yes <laughs> So to just explain, this year Ancon was a two-day thing. Once more, it was held at at Antics, uh, who of course is making the whole event. Um, And yeah, this year was both on Saturday and on Sunday. So Sunday was a little bit of a shorter day. Well, it was at least not as busy as the Saturday, which was the main event. And uh, I think a lot of people actually didn't realize this. Um, Us in the inner community, we talked a lot about, oh, let's see what happens. Um, but when I talk with people on the Saturday itself, a lot of people uh, sadly weren't aware that there was another day. Uh, so a lot of them had only booked one day. So that's a little bit sad. Um, but just to end it off, Lynn, so how was your experience, just from your perspective? Uh, what, what, what was the, yeah, what, what did you think of this year's Ancon? Well, it seems like last year we had more talks. <clears throat> <laughs> Pointing at you, what? Alex, what? as well. <laughs> I completely uh, forgot about that. Oh, you shouldn't have brought that up. Oh. <laughs> oh. So that was a little bit, a little bit disappointing because uh, we like the talks. We like to hear people talk. Uh, a little, uh, how do you even call them? The little presentations. We like those. Yeah. And this year there were less presentations. And I also don't like that Wakushi only brought three diamond uh, <laughs> mystery <laughs> boxes. Instead of bringing enough for everyone, um, but other than that, it was uh, yeah, uh, it really felt like coming home once again. And yeah. uh, the presentations that were were there were uh, pretty informative. And yeah. uh, I liked the little games that Sadie put up. So the puzzle, we had a lot of fun with the puzzle as well. And uh, yeah, it, it, I liked it, and I'm gonna go there as well next year again. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, once I think it's just 
I, I love the whole community. Well, I've got to wait until it's my turn to talk about it. Because, of course, we also have Jake here, who just muted, who unmuted again. <laughs> um, Jake, I hope you're doing well as well. Uh, this was your third year at Ancon, and uh, what was it like? Oh, absolutely brilliant, as usual. I, I love it. Like, as um, Lynn said, it's, it's like going home. And it's, it's wicked up there. Yeah, this year you didn't bring your crow, though. No, no, Ricky, I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember last year. I think it was on the Sunday morning you came with Ricky and you just let him go <laughs> in the store part of the uh, and antics. And, uh, oh. things off the window, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so out of the two other events, what, what is there anything you liked more this time? Or, or what was your overall thoughts of the event compared to the other two? Overall, it was 10 out of 10, and that's basically what all the others are as well. So you can't really yeah. like improve it if you get what I mean. If it happened exactly the same next year, I'd be like over the moon still if you get what I mean. Yeah. But my favorite, my favorite was Sadie's Games. But was, yeah, that was great on the Sunday. I, I went for the puzzle game, but got beat. So like changed onto the tweezer game. Where you had to tweezer up loads of little ants into a jar, and yeah, I thought I won that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Jake, uh, just a personal question: um, Where were you on the Saturday? <laughs> I-, I came in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> it, start- it started in the morning. Mm, it was about eleven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you had a- you had a good Friday, I think, right? Yeah, I think we were up to about four. <laughs> I don't even know. No, I, th- I mean, that's one of the things I really enjoy about Ancon, uh, because it's, it's for, for me, it's a little mini vacation like Lynn. Well, Lynn took a real vacation, I take my usual little mini vacation. Uh, I came there on the Thursday is- this year, and I went to, uh, went to talk with a few people who had already joined on Thursday. We were like 10, 15 people, I think. And I- had a little evening. Uh, well, some people, <clears throat> Jack, had a crazy evening. Uh, but most of us just had a casual evening, and of course, then on Friday, a lot more people joined. I, I went over and helped assemble like Wakushi Artworlds, and uh, just went over there and just yeah, helped Wakushi set up his uh, store, which we're also going to come on to a little bit later in the podcast. Um, but I think this year's Ancon was um, it was very busy. There was uh, there was more people. Um, of course, every year they try to expand. I think there was a hundred and forty people. I may think uh, this year, and. I mean, to be honest, you didn't really feel it because the escape room had also been more of the... And, and Antics is both an escape room and the end store. And the escape room had, once again, like last year, been changed over to a part of Ancon. So, more people. It felt a little bit more cramped some areas, but also overall, I think it was a very nice event. Um, but yeah, I, I had a little... Um, I was meant to do a meet and greet, but on people's pictures, I think there was just a picture of Holifer, and my, my logo, my Ant Holifer logo. And I got like a, a massive tent for me to, to do my meet and greet. And I'm like, I was just supposed to get a table and a chair. And, and that was that was my meet and greet. And, and then like a little sign, meet and greet. <laughs> so when I realized that, I, I was I went there on the Friday, I'm like, so where, where's where's the meet and greet of this? Where, where's, where, where am I staying? And he's like, oh, well, um, I think you have the tent. And I was like, the, the tent? Um, the tent? Either way, we're not going to go into all of that because that was a terrible little beginning to my meet and greet. In the end, it was very nice though. I had a lot of, a lot of uh, guys coming over, had a good chat, took some pictures, and all of that good stuff. Um, but yeah, this year, of course, this year Ancon was a three-day event. And uh, Lynn, Lynn, were you already there on Thursday? Uh, I think we arrived on uh, Thursday. Yes. So did you did, uh, but you didn't you didn't meet up with the others. I don't remember if it was Thursday or Friday, but we did go to Ant Antics to collect our uh, cards and everything to get inside on the Saturday. So we yeah, did right. have a little little chat over there, and I saw uh, who saw, did I saw I saw I think I saw PJ or uh, Hood, and I saw uh, the clo- ants and the colonialist. So we walked a little bit slower, <laughs> so we wouldn't uh, catch up with those. <laughs> uh, because I like to be hidden. Uh, ah. And that's pretty much all we did this year because I was pretty tired from all the road trips and the touring and everything. So we didn't go to the to the weather spoon or anything like that uh, this year. No, I think I think one of the things that's brilliant with Ancon is 
of course the the event is like the entire day this year hang on that's something we're gonna go on to a little bit uh, later uh the event was a lot longer this year which i'm not sure is necessarily a good thing but we're gonna discuss that in a second um but yeah of course what what we do is we after ancon like half of all of the people at ancon just slowly but surely get over to the local weather spoon that's like five minute walk away max five minute walk and I just love every year we just take over the Weatherspoon like a corner. It's just all Ancon shirts. Uh, I think I can't. Ah, what is her name? There's a. Ah, oh, I can't remember her name now. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, one of the one of the regulars who've been there for all three years took a picture of like the entire end of Weatherspoon where we just all, yeah, all Ancon was just taking over it, which I thought was really lovely. Um, but yeah, Jake, you uh, you arrived on Friday this year, right? Yeah, about four o'clock on or four p.m like friday i think it was about then yeah yeah well, actually Wait. five because the trains were an hour late <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think um i i think it's um this this year again there are some talks i think we should just okay before we go into like how to how to change slash and prove it um just to round it up quickly um i was there thursday friday saturday and sunday and like Thursday is a little bit of not that many people there. Friday is a little bit of the the people who are helping with setting up event. They come in and then they help out and start stuff like that. And then Friday afternoon we all meet up at Weatherspoon and start having the good fun. Uh, there's also a little bit of a tradition that some of us also go over and get a pizza. Uh, there's like an Italian restaurant. Uh, this year we were, I think we were 12 people this year who went over there. So that's always super nice and cozy. Uh, now that's that's something I really just enjoy about Ancon. It's such a friendly environment. Everyone just meets up. People, uh, I've not seen JB for an entire year. I've not seen Ant passionate for an entire year, and we just meet up and talk like nothing's happened, even though we haven't seen each other for a year. I've, I haven't even spoken with them for a year, I think. Uh, but yeah, Saturday is of course a big Ancon day event, and this to so this year it went from 10 a.m. to seven. Was it seven or was it six? Seven or six p.m. Yeah, ma yeah, maybe six. Yeah, it was two. Uh, the years before it ended at four, at least. Um, but yeah, and then of course Sunday we had the second smaller event where we actually also got speakers over there doing presentations. I think it opened at ten, and I don't know when it closed because we I had to head back to uh, London to go to Heathrow to catch my plane. So I left around two. Well, I was pretty much the last one out the door, basically. Oh. <laughs> waiting for the train so it was like oh just uh head over there for the sunday bit yeah and, yeah when everyone else had gone i cruised on down and caught me train yeah so when, <laughs> when when did you end up leaving then do you know what time it was about 3 30 4 o'clock in the afternoon oh, okay and it was only like winded out i i i heard that there was meant to be like um i think some something that's a little bit uh, sad this year is so normally normally the other two years the first and second year uh, Saturday have been the event and then Sunday people like came back and it was like a little bit in the morning picked up the supplies the colonies and left and what I really enjoyed with those Saturday events was there was a big like ending to Ancon where Rich was hold, ha having his speak and we were all clapping and having fun and, and all of this I don't know if that happened on the Sunday uh, it, it, Jake did that happen on the Sunday? No, I think it just steadily wound out and everyone kind of said goodbye themselves. So if you get what I mean, it was it was uh, nice and personal on the Sunday. Yeah, and that's that's also what I think Sunday is the good event. That's, that's one, one joy about Sunday. I don't think it should really be a part of the event, but more for like come over and hang out. Uh, because I, I think personally for me, uh, let me know what you guys think, but I think Saturday should just be the event itself. Uh, this year it was a little bit longer and what I felt happened was a lot of people around like we of course we come there at 10 there's not there's not food over there at the venue there's well there's cake and coffee and like snacks um, so people like usually go back and forth around 11 12 1 ish um, and I think a lot of people just starting to leave around like 5 because there was like dinner time and I think it was a little bit sad because I remembered Ans Britannia he was doing a little bit of a Ah, oh, this is what who who won my prizes uh, because he was doing a little. The guy who got the most points would win, and because there wasn't really a good final, like a good outro to the event, people had just sizzled out, 
And the only four people who listened to him doing his final speech was the four people who were the four best and to find out who was the winner. And I felt that was really sad. I, I really felt that we, we needed a big rounding off like we had the other two years. Uh, I'm not saying that the event itself was, was not good, but it was just the ending. Uh, because I really miss that. Uh, because like the other years, there's been like the big, thank you all for joining this year. See you next year. Goodbye. And then people start fizzling out slowly but surely over like the next half to an hour. Um, just to go back, Lynn, Lynn, when did you leave on the Sunday? I think we went uh, within 30 minutes of uh, UN sit leaving, pretty yeah. much. We went to get uh, coffee and everything. Uh, yeah, because we were, we didn't know when it would end and how it would end and everything. I do agree that it was a little bit confusing. As well on Saturday that some things started to get moved around and then suddenly you were like you were planning to do something but suddenly something else was starting so when you had you had the program but at the end it got completely messed up yeah i think one of the reasons for that was i i was one of the speakers and i didn't i didn't have the program <laughs> i didn't i got a lot i got a send a screenshot of, of like okay this is where you are and i'm like okay that's all i need but i of course i saw one of the i saw what you guys had the guys who bought tickets well i had done that as well but i couldn't find my login either way um, i feel like the last year there was like posters a few places around the event saying like because uh, all the people who come are divided into four groups so the presentations won't be overcrowded so there's like four groups and the presentators do the four same presentation four times so everyone can hear it and last year there was like posters everywhere so you could go and read the time schedule and you were like okay so that's where we are okay this is what's happening now uh, th it wasn't here this year and i think a lot of people um at least from what i saw they didn't really go to that post and and the where they were meant to go they were just kind of having fun going around which is of course also what it's all about but it also became a little bit confusing um but i think yeah it's just it's just because you get a little bit one of the things one of the things i've said all three years i'm sorry it's a mini rant here mini rant but one of the things i've said all four or three years at ancon to rich uh who's who's the founder um we we need like speakers around the event i guess there's already speakers actually because it's playing like nice casual music a few places um i really think it should be a speaker every hour like so now this starts just ended there <laughs> so so people know that okay this is now starting okay this is now starting um to help like the flow of things um but yeah jake what do you think of what i'm saying right now <laughs> that would be wicked and you could like let anybody you could be there like who wants to do the next uh, announcement uh, and let anyone have a go as well and it'd be like yep <laughs> that could be funny that could be really funny actually so uh yeah the kids the kids would love that lynn what do you think of all of these uh less uh, less all positive things what what are your thoughts on it oh uh, i mean i liked it anyway so <laughs> there might be yeah. some things that are like they, they can be improved but yeah that's all it's gonna be the case probably all the time anyway so exactly well there's a lot of new things this year and and that's just every as long as it's expanding there will always be issues which is a good thing and of course for for me these were not major things um it was it was quite strangely i i just for me i never really hear the speakers i always just sit down and i just go around and talk with people um it's it's weird i i keep ants for, and do videos about it but i'm not really an ant nerd i don't I don't really read the scientific papers and, and go all study mode. I just have fun. And for me at Ancon, I, as, that's what I'm continuing doing, like just having fun. And I, I wasn't, I, I, I heard a few of the presentations, but for me, that's that that's not why I like Ancon. I just like having fun. But I think, I think with saying, saying having fun a lot, we should move on to the next tour, uh, topic, which is the best thing of Ancon this year. Starting with you, Jake. What was, uh, what was your favorite moment or the best thing this year? Well, just play these games basically i thought that was great <laughs> and the ants were pretty good like there were some good ants there as well and the ant exhibit were were top notch as well what were your favorite ants to see well there there was this there's a big colony of uh singularis they were nice or yeah something else like running running around in pipes i think it was the meat ant maybe mm, Nico Barentis was going 
into the uh, like where you at the entrance of an oh, yeah. yeah, through all the pipes yeah they're yeah. pretty cool they had like a well long pipe network yeah i always enjoy seeing seeing rich's brain because i love how he turns boring setups into designs i love that i could transform my apartment to bring like some uh, it's because I, like if i just take a wakushinus and just put it on the wall it just looks like an ant nest but the way the way rich like builds a frame around it and puts a little bit of fake plants and and writes on the wall yeah, what species is inside a bit of wood and like bark and stuff as well yeah yeah he just that just it gives so much more personality and i wish i could transform my own setups into that because it looks mega um but yeah Lynn, what was your favorite thing slash best thing this year? Also gonna reply to the to those setups that Rich has because even for my sister who does not keep ants and only sees like the basic stuff that I have to keep ants, she really loves the designs and the the weird stuff and the enclosures and how they're they're made up at ant antics because they're so much different than what you're use, usually seeing uh, for setups. So that's really nice as well. Like the, the yeah. meat ant setup and the Nico Berensis this year was really fun to see. And I'll also get my inspiration out there uh, from there to see if I can improve my own setups uh, in a way to make more it both more engaging for me as as well as for the ants. So I like that part. Uh, yeah. What did I like most? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I Of course, I always like the speakers. Like the people, the interviews and everything, because they're yeah. also very informative. And I actually made sugar snaps for the first time this year, because I didn't last time. <laughs> and I, I bought 10 of them, so <laughs> oh. we went uh, all out. And my dad was really interested in the 3D printers and everything. So he got a good explanation from, I think it was Sam, who gave him like a whole speech about the printers. Yeah. And... Uh, what else did I like? The puzzle, of course. Really <laughs> love the puzzle. I actually like everything of Antcon. Pretty much, there's not le really something that I really hate or really dislike. Uh, anyway, I just want to say, even though I have some constructive criticism, there's nothing I I hate either. I, I really enjoy the event. It's just it's the one time of year where you can just let your mind loose, just have fun. Um, this year it's, it's strange like i've started giving names to my colonies and the other years like people came over oh how's your nico Parenzas doing and i was like oh they're doing good this year how's panica doing and uh, <laughs> when they when they say panica i know okay you've seen the videos just you know the manica queen uh was really fun um i think yeah my favorite things i don't know what i think it's just oh i love just hanging out with the community um and just like the witherspoon afterwards and all of that but I, I like you to also say it's so amazing to watch Rich build the setup, not build them, but watch what he has built. Um, I really fell in love with this little Nopsis Geminata tank, um, and I really want to recreate, well, it's, yeah, recreate something like that for my ecosystem because that's all ripped apart at the moment. Um, and it's really inspired me. I just, I was sat there. I don't like fish, it's not something I really care for. I would never really keep fish. But yet, I want to keep fish to put them underneath an ant setup like he did. Uh, because that looked sick. Um, and the same with just watching the different colonies. I really loved seeing the... See, now I'm going to try to say the green weaver name. The uh, Ophelia Schmeridina is how I say it. I don't know if it's completely wrong or not. But uh, yeah, it was really cool that they had weaved a nest of a plant. But it was fake. They had weaved a fake plant. Uh, that was I really love seeing that because that just shows that okay you can give them a plant and they can weave it. it doesn't have to be a real plant but uh, who, who 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 cares about that um so I think I think well, my favorite thing is just watching Richard work like how how he's made everything it's really it's really fun um but going on to the next topic this year we once more had these two regular stores we had the Ant antique store the Wakushi store one thing I hope to see in the future no, you know, we're going to wait to that uh, because we have, a, we have a point saying how to improve later on. But yeah, this year Wakushi was uh, selling his Gen 4. Last year we were just showing it, but this year was actually selling Gen 4 and Gen 5, aka modular and standalone nests. And 
well, it was nice to see like all the products summed up uh, and in real life because I could actually see them with pictures on like the website. <laughs> More cushy. <cushy-y>. Um, <clears throat> uh, so <laughs> I actually really enjoyed it because the Wakushi side is so uh, it was not it's not outdated but just doesn't show all of the new fancy things on the website. And it was really fun to see like the entire just display put out um, and and seeing it. You can see if you if you don't know what I'm talking about, Wakushi posted a picture on Instagram where he showed everything. Um, credit to me because I took that picture and uploaded it. Um, <laughs> I, I said, I, okay, I said to him, you need to take a picture and post on Instagram. He's like, nah, I'm, and I just took a picture and posted it for him. Uh, so, credit to me, guys, credit to me. But yeah, what I want to say is also that Ant Antics this year um, started selling nests. It's not started, but showed. It's the first time I actually saw the Ant Antics nest in real life. Of course, Jake, you you know a lot about them because you have them. Uh, but for me, it was really fun to actually see them. And hopefully, I'll be receiving some soon. Uh, so I can put my uh, Paniki Manica Rubida in them. Uh, so that's going to be cool. But it was really fun to like see them in real life and talk with Sam and Rich how they were made. And w- w- the development process behind them. Because I think that's something we don't really catch much of the behind the scenes of Wakushi and... The different and stores out there but to actually go up and like like you said uh, lynn see the 3d printers and your dad got a whole speak of how they work and stuff like that um i really enjoyed that because i was also up there just looking at it because you hear like a laser printer is big laser cutter is big but, but seeing it it was really fun uh but yeah did you buy anything this year uh jake i got quite a bit i got well from sid i got or oh, wakushi the how much was it not the biggest mystery box because he didn't bring enough of them and i've missed <laughs> it but the next one down got yeah, one of them 75 one yeah that's the one which was oh it's, it's got loads of stuff in it i, I still haven't like used or even looked at half of it <laughs> i've been just been like oh i need to use that list now like, yeah find it pieces and Else did, did you get a, did you get any new oh. queens yeah i did get loads of ants actually i was just thinking i got the little antantic nest as well. but queen wise got diversa polybrachus armata polybrachus time and then polybrachus something something <laughs> like, it's like a double barrel second name but I have to look on YouTube to like find that out, <laughs> and it will take too long to dig it up. But they're pretty cool looking little girls. Yeah, I I, I love the the stance of Antics as well. Like seeing all of the different queens, like you have a little display where you can watch them. And okay, so I I love that you could see the size of a queen. Like I thought at one point about getting different Fidoli species and just coming to Ancon, just looking at them and like, but they're just so small. But I don't like small ants. Like it's so fun to see the different species in real life. Thinking like, okay, I like like the example the Mesa arenaras. I've heard they grow insanely slow and stuff like that. But seeing them in real life, I'm like, but how cool are they though? Like the Mesa uh, cephalotus, uh, the the massive colony they just uh, received from um, what is it called, Adam ants, and just seeing it in real life, like how massive are they? I want them. Uh, so that's that's super cool. Um, and yeah, like you said, Jake. And yeah, like like you said, Jake. This year, Wakushi. Uh, the previous years, uh, every ticket had like a tier, and you would get a lot of stuff in the tier, in in the back with with your ticket. And this year was just a standard ticket price, and you then had to separately buy all the stuff afterwards. So it was cheaper. But you, if you want to get stuff, you have to buy it afterwards. And Wakushi this year had these mystery boxes, and I think they were thirty five. 75 and 150 pounds and the value inside was pretty much double and uh, i myself also picked up a 75 one so it was great fun still uh, and i need an outworld for my manica uh, no for my meatlands i know i already have it so that was lovely uh lynn did you buy any stuff this year uh yeah i also got um a sapphire box i wanted to get a diamond but they were all gone so that didn't work out <laughs> So, uh, but I'm I'm pretty pleased with the sapphire one. There was a lot of uh, stuff inside that I liked, and I got a lot of uh, chambers that I like because you have the the twin chamber and the single chamber. And I do not like the single chamber, and I got all twin chambers, so I'm very happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And then I was really debating on one of the ant species and I showed it to my mom because I was showing all the different ant species that there were for sale. And I was like, look, look, the species. It was the, the drop tail ants, the Myrmicaria brunea. And I showed her, look, look, they have the, the, the gasters underneath their bodies because that's the way they are. They are like little hunchbacks. They are like yeah. um, the little house that we have in France was called... Uh, the town that it's in is called um, Bossus le Remigny, which means the hunchback of Remigny. So that's kind of funny. And I was really debating, should I get one, should I not get one? And I ended up not buying anything on Saturday oh. and wise, but we came back on Sunday uh -huh. and there was a discounted species inside of a Saturn Mini that he needed to get, it just needed to be gone. And yeah. the price was almost the same as one of the colonies on Saturday. So I was like, ah, yeah, it's meant to be. I'm taking them home right now. <laughs> They're mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I got them with the setup and uh, really pleased with that. Very happy purchase. So. Yeah, that's great to hear. Hashtag two grand's uh, favorite species right there. <laughs> no, he likes the, the not not the lan, not the lanish, not the oh. lanish, the, the, uh, the African one. And these oh, the it's not the same. I have, no. Because oh. he has them from Africa and mine are from Asia. Ah, oh, well. I just Almost. heard drop trails. <laughs> drop trails. I'm like, ah, oh, that's too good. <laughs> um, so, yeah, going into what's the more out final topic of uh, Ancon wise, uh, Jake, how would you improve Ancon for 2025? That's a tricky question. Mm. Should it be bigger, smaller, more vendors, less kids, um, less adults, more speakers? Well, uh, ice cream trucks. To be fair, that, that yeah, ice cream truck that would have been pretty <laughs> good. But, mm, most of it's yeah. pretty spot on. Like they increased the size of the tent. Like the tent this year was a lot, lot bigger. Um, so mm. if you were at, in Rich's shoes, would you just uh, copy paste for next year? Pretty much. Maybe with the kind of changed timetable. So maybe it's just like one and two. And if it's full when you go up for one, you know, you can go up for like two. Yeah. It's a bit looser if you get what I mean. That's actually a, sm a small thing for the guys who actually do the speaks. I think instead of it should be like the same four that just repeat, 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 then we as speakers actually can't go over and see the others because while the others are doing their presentation, you, you do parallel to them, do all your four. So if Rich is listening, could you please like do somehow so all the presentators can also hear all the presentations because it's just about matching and matching a little bit more. It's going to be more complicated to plan out, but it should work. But yeah, Lynn. If you were in Rich's shoes and needed to improve next year, what would you do? Ooh, well, definitely the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see what else can we add. I had something in mind, but now I forgot it. Uh, let me think. Wait, what was it? Because <laughs> you, you, you distracted me with the speaker, so now I'm confused. <laughs> More stars. Oh, yeah. Nay, no. well, wait, wait. Uh, Sid needs to... Wakushi needs to, like, make this... Uh, little thing that if people like if he if he brings misty boxes again next year make <laughs> sure people can like reserve one or pre-purchase one so that he he has already sold one like before it even gets there yeah, and then, but then everybody would get what would get one if they want one you know so you can sure he can sell some more at the event itself for people that do not follow him but like make like this option that people can pre-purchase them so if if if, if uh, jake wants a diamond and, and and you want a diamond alex wants a diamond everyone wants a diamond you have like eight diamonds already reserved with their name <laughs> on it on the box like they're ready to go reserved <laughs> yeah that would be <laughs> less people being annoyed at least <laughs> um yeah i think ov overall this year was was a, was a great year i think a lot of people had fun one of the biggest things that didn't work in 2023 was the door system because there was just some massive lines but throughout the day uh paul uh, and ramslink went went to just fix everything and just gave all people numbers as far as i heard and um, yeah this year i think depending on what 
when you bought your ticket, you got a number. So if it was number 45 who bought a ticket, you got number 45, I think. Um, I don't know. I think it was like that. No. Um, no, no, not at all. How was it then? <laughs> at the Nic Nico Branch's setup, there was this little uh, little thingy on the wall that you need to rip off a ticket for your number. Ah. But actually, the ticket system didn't work out as favorable because the, r the numbers were really randomly skipped. And by the time that uh, I was, the skip, my number was already skipped. Oh. And the diamond box, of course, was already gone <laughs> because I was patiently waiting. <laughs> So it didn't really work uh, out. I mean, it, it kept it less busy. Yeah, there wasn't there wasn't massive queues this year. Yeah, it might it might be easier if they put like uh, ten people and then one to ten, and one to ten can come on a certain hour or something. I don't know. It's yeah. a little bit hard. That's the thing. Like, it's the issue is the the size of the event that needs some more planning, like structure. But it's also hard because the bigger it grows, the harder it is. Um, but I think that should be maybe prioritized a bit more next year. Either way, uh, it's time for my mini rant of how to improve Ancon. Um, <laughs> because I have some things to say and I want to get it off my chest. Um, because I feel like there's there's one thing I, th I think it's very wrong. And that's the and that's the size of the overall event. Uh, I know right now Antics is locked down at this place. And due to the fire, I think it's because of a, a fi if a fire were to occur, you need a maximum of a certain amount of people, and that's why the cap is at 140, or however how many ever it is, uh, because that's that's simply the law. Um, but for me, when I hear Ancon, when I think about Ancon now, it's like ah, oh, it's like all happy, uh, close circle, a lot of friends, and we meet up and we have a lot of fun. We go out uh, to Willspoon, having a lot of fun afterwards as well, and I feel. It's not a it's not a very big event because there's a lot of it's it gets sold out quickly, and when I hear the name AntCon, it's of course an Ant convention, and I think it's very sad that there's only first of all only two stores there, so there's only Wakushi and Antics. I would love to see like Ants HQ, and Farm Supply, and Stavy perhaps as well, maybe even someone like Aesthetic Ants coming from from across the well from from mainland Europe. And, and other stuff, I would love to see more stores being there and for it to become more of an Ant convention. Uh, because of course, it, the, the, the hard thing is right now when you think of Ant Con, at least when I think of Ant Con, it's just like cozy and happy and not many people. But when you think of like a, rep, uh, like a reptile convention, there's a ton of people, there's a ton of stores, there's a ton of things to look at. Um, and I don't know if it, it's, it's got the wrong name at this stage, because I feel like this year it was a lot more just of Ant Antics. Nice, it was like coming to Ant Antics and visiting the store and seeing everything. Um, and when I talked with Rich the first year, it was planned to become bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, but of course, we're still locked down at the venue. Um, so, I don't know, I would, just, I would love to see more stores there. I know it's the issue, there's a ton of issues with, uh, okay, if we invite Ants HQ, that's going to be a competitor to Rich and all of this. And then, well, then you have competition there. But I just think that's that's part of like a convention. Like, it's it's not there to earn money, it's there to bring people together. And I feel like with a closed cap of only like 140 people that can join and only two stores actually selling products, it's really close. And I really displease that. I... And I don't like that. I would love to meet up with other people because this is the one time a year where you actually meet up with the community. And I don't know if uh, if they invited the other stores. I mean, this year we actually had Charlie from Anfam Supplies. He wasn't selling anything, but I loved sitting and talking with him um, and just having casual funds. And if he had brought some nests to to and to sell, I'm sure I would have picked some up. Like I picked up some Ant Antics and some Wakushi stuff. Um, so yeah, I don't know. What do you think of this chick? Yeah, I think in a way it would be good. It'd be maybe it'd be nice. I'd say if you had like a Saturday where it's uh, like an Antics, and then a Sunday where it was like a bigger venue or something like that, possibly. Mm. Yeah. And then be like, yeah, everyone bring I don't know everything. Yeah. Kind of on the Sunday, and then any if anyone wanted like certain stuff on the Saturday. It's kind of not a competition then, I guess, as well, because it'll be like, oh, got 35% off. Oh, no, what was it? 25% off? Yeah. yeah. Well, I got 35 but yeah. <laughs> Cashier. That's, that's what it's called, right? Cashier. Concierge. Concierge. Concierge, yeah, that's what it is. 
Yeah, I just, I just, I wish it was bigger compared to like the size of the community because I think easily, I don't know if 500 people could come, but 250 people easily, and I think more stores could easily come as well. Um, because again, for me, when I come there, it's not, I don't come to buy stuff. I don't come to, uh, well, I'm not like Okushi and Antex who, who, who sell stuff. I just come to have fun. And I wish it could be bigger to have more fun. Um, not necessarily to, to to speak to more to other people, but just have more of the community. Like this is meant to be a community event, but putting a cap on how many can join and for the tickets to be sold out rapidly just shows that there is a demand for more. <laughs> and a smaller thing, I know, I mean, for me, it doesn't matter too much because I have to drive and I have to fly all the way in from Denmark either way. Uh, but, but if it is for the venue to be changed, maybe closer to London. So, so more people worldwide could fly in because, like, I I, I know Formicast talked about coming this year, uh, and budget and all of that ended up being being the killer. But also, if he wants to travel, it would be like an eight to twelve hour flight, depending on where in the like country it is. And then when he comes to London, then he has to do another four hours travel to get all the way out to the to Wales. Um, so I think it's it's a hard thing to change for rich. But I'm just sitting here thinking like, okay, so how are we going to expand next year and next year and next year and next year? Where's Ancon in five years? Before we go that, Lynn, Lynn, what do you think of all of this I'm saying? Mm, well, that wouldn't be Antcon anymore. That would be more like an Ant Expo. And at the current uh, setup, the current location, that wouldn't be possible because there's simply not enough space. So is, there a difference need... between, is there a difference between an Expo and a convention? Well, I'm not entirely sure, but the expos that we have over here are like really big uh, facilities with multiple shops all reserving a table and having to pay for that table and the yeah. location to be able to sit there and show there. Well, yeah. this, this, the current setup from Endcon is like more like it's a homey feeling. You, you get to the location, you know what to expect. Uh, of course, the, it's limited to two sellers, but these two sellers are the ones that pay for uh, pretty much most of the location. So if you yeah. would ha add another seller, it would have the seller would have to uh, add his money to get to uh, get a table there. Yeah, and, and that and, would of course be fair, I think. But yeah. Yeah, pretty much. But it would also indeed be some sort of a battle probably going on because they sell this species and and Antix also sells this species and then it's going to be a, like an all blown possibly war because they're going to both try and lower their prices to get the ants gone to get the money in and it's going to be it might be getting frustrated frustrating if you do something like that it's at the, at the current location it might not be possible to uh, do what you are imagining in your mind no no 100 percent not it's it's too small uh, it's, it's simply too small but the thing is like where would you see antcon in five years because i mean it's happened three years it's it's not a small thing three years in a row and i feel like of course it's a little bit more people and this it's a little bit more finalized but the first year we came we had stores and we had presentations and we had chill out and it's the, it's the same this year and i'm just thinking like in five years is ancon still a thing i hope so but it's still just the same like like how is is, is i hope it's going to expand to include because when i hear convention like i wish more stores could come but i'm, I'm sure they're not allowed um but i wish that was the case like i wish like like if imagine if it became such a big thing that people like tahil ants would fly over and sell his products that would be amazing, like if it was like, like a proper weekend event, people like from America would fly over, like Lights, Camera Ants, maybe even Ants Canada. If it really got rolling, I don't think that's going to happen, but I know like Lights, Camera Ants has also talked about it. And it would just be cool like if, if people like from Pormor Arts could fly over and sell their stuff, uh, Tile Ants could fly over. It's going to be hard to fly over and sell stuff because they can't ship them, but maybe, <laughs> maybe do some sort of things with that. I just don't think... I, it's hard because you're gonna lose that home feeling of and antics but it also has the name and convention it's like an and convention and right now it's like more of a homey and antics vibe and i just think like in five years time is it still just got, gonna be a homey and 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 is it still just gonna be a homey and antics vibe 
or is it expanded at that stage? Because yeah, I wish I wish it would be. It's hard because again you lose the homie vibe, but you get more people and more stores, and it's a lot more fun for the community. I think. Uh, yeah, I don't know what you think of this. I'm kind of wondering if any of the other stores contacted uh, uh, Rich and Wakushi to see if they have places available for them to uh, sit there. I'm actually wondering if that happened or not. Uh, yeah. Uh, good question. <laughs> I would have. Hmm, it's hard to say, because I know Aesthetic came last year with Nest and sold. Well, Atlantic sold the Nest, but Aesthetic brought them. Um, but yeah, I just I just wouldn't imagine the. Uh, I wouldn't imagine them being allowed. Well, possibly, but I don't know. Well, well, Jake, you also had some thoughts. I think if they contributed a bit, I think they could. Yeah. I just pay a what? fee of a thousand pounds or something. I don't know. A thousand pounds? Holy yeah. shit! <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't mean for cost. I don't. I don't know what it's table. I don't know what they sell and stuff like that. Maybe five hundred, two hundred. I don't know. But two hundred yeah. seems re reasonable. But then, then you're also gonna have to fight again with uh, getting the money out of it. Well, if they sell mystery boxes. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a hard one. I just, it's just hard because I, uh, from the first year, I remember I talked with Rich and I'm like, ah, I can't wait to see more stores. And, and, well, I, talk, I think I talked with Rich and said, and both of them, I didn't really get like, oh, that's going to happen next year. I'm like, okay. You know, I didn't get the vibe that it's going to happen, that, uh, that we'll see more stores. Um, I'm just looking for, I'm looking forward to seeing what will change. Um, if, if we sit here in three years and talk about, okay, so next year, are we going to see more stores, or is it the same too for 27 <laughs> or 28? Yeah, it's a hard one. Um, but yeah, if, if you have, do you have guys have any final thoughts of the topic, or should we move on to uh, the weekly updates? Jake? Uh, well, there is one little story, which like no one knows this, because pretty much everyone had gone out. But I went oh. over to the fire ant tank, and I like shoved my finger in it, and they couldn't bite my finger. So I put some on my arm, and uh, yeah, they they stole. Surprising. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a right big lump. <laughs> yeah, the savage little things there, like stab, stab, stab. <laughs> it doesn't hurt too bad though, but yeah, it's oh. <laughs> all right. Lynn, do you have any uh, final things to say for Ancon this year? I don't think so. All right. I think this year a lot more people brought their colonies, and that was lovely. Like seeing, first of all, seeing uh, your colony, uh, Jake. The uh, I can't remember. Is it Scarlet? 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 Something? The Queen? That the might be Ramirez, I think. Ah, oh, okay. I can't um, remember myself. I need to look back on the videos and like figure it out. <laughs> But yeah, it was really cool to see the different setups that have been brought along, like Hood's massive meat and colony, Adamant's Cephalotes, and all of the different, like the Flavors one, the uh, the Tetsu, uh, yeah, all of the other colonies. There was like a few on display. Really cool to see the different setups, some really unique setups. Um, but yeah, Jake, a few episodes ago, we talked about leaf cutters, and we had a little bit of a are they semi claustral or fully claustral? And uh, you just let me know that you had an update to, to explain. So, Jake, the table or the floor is yours. So, they are fully claustral, basically. Like, they won't leave their founding chamber, like, once they've dug it. And the queen, she kind of spits up her food for the babies. And then it says excretions. And I'm not really sure what it is, but the queen's obviously using something that comes out of her and <laughs> hoping it's like skin secretions or something to feed the fungus and that's how the little bit of fungus stays alive while oh. the workers are developing that's cool that's a, that's a twist that's cool all right well thank you uh thank you for coming with that update and um well we're gonna get your weekly updates in a second but lynn you were very upset that we did have haven't been recorded podcast because uh, we apparently have a few updates regarding uh, some amicias and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, because every single week that the podcast has been skipped, there was some amazing news for Peggy. Uh, 
when I came home after Antcon, I actually left the INSB for a little bit and then I checked up on them and all the pupae were actually e closing. Oh, nice. And I, uh, I now have, I think, I'm, I'm not sure if they have all e closed right now, but there was five of them walking around and looking really pissed and everything. <laughs> so uh, it's going really well. And then I noticed there being new larvae as well already. So going uh, really fast over there. That's great to hear, man. Uh, so, how's the leaf cutters? Uh, well, when you see them day to day, they don't, like every single day, you don't really notice how much they grow. But when I came home from Entcon as well, it was like, oh, oh, now they're a decent sized fungus. It's going really well for them. So, yeah, yeah that's nice. It's, it's good to take some pictures so you can look like, like them. In, yeah, exactly. <laughs> three weeks they've grown all of this. Um, but yeah, of course, my weekly updates. Uh, I've, I've moved apartment. I've disassembled my entire ecosystem. Ripped out everything. I found the thing is I thought one crab had died, right? So I, I took the crab I saw, put it in a box. And uh, yeah, I emptied the entire setup. I grabbed the snake. I found the singularis. I dug the singularis out. All successful. Uh, I dug out the manica. All successful. I dug out the uh, harping nestles of Vinita, All successful. I didn't expect it to be so easy, but it was actually super easy. And they're all now in just the tops of dirt I dogged them out of. And I just, I'm just giving them food in there and have, they have a test tube as well. Um, I'm surprised how massive the single layers is. Holy smokes, they're huge. Um, but yeah, I continued yesterday with uh, emptying out the rest of the ecosystem. So there, there's nothing in there but a little bit of water now. All dirt is gone uh, because I'm reimagining it completely. Well, I, I still have the background. And you know what I saw after I'd emptied absolutely everything out? I saw another crab walking in there. I'm like, dude, I've only seen one crab for pretty much like half a year. <laughs> Where have you been, mate? Uh, but apparently it took... Uh, and the, th the worst thing is like, I, I went to grab a box a little bit later. Like, I'm okay, but I better get this crab out then. It was gone. I don't know where it is now. Uh, but yeah, I can only say one thing. The uh, Nicoparensis, my oldest colony, sadly didn't make it. I didn't find the brood chamber queen anything i just i such i found random workers um but yeah my brevinoda my um yeah my mimesia brevinoda she finally got her first workers after i kept her for 10 months she has now has three workers as well so that's brilliant my red-headed trap joans finally also got the first not finally but they also got the first workers and finally my massive um parabrenar clavata has a massive fat larvae and three small larvae, so everything seems to be going all right. Um, my vampire ants sadly have passed, but they never really had a chance, it seems. So, yeah, other than the two passing of this uh, Nico Princess and uh, vampires, everything is going smooth. Still a lot to do in the admin room, though, and in the entire apartment, but yeah. Guys, any final thoughts on the topic of Ancon, Jake? Uh, and just, yeah, generally of life. How's life, Jake? I'll see you next year. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. See you next year. Um, ah, man, to be honest, right? I loved, actually, just... I loved talking with Britannia. It was so cool. I was fully fanboying when I talked with him. It was a uh, uh, good thing I wasn't completely sober. But, uh, yeah, I was fully fanboying <laughs> talking with uh, him. It was a legendary moment. Um, just generally, just meeting everyone. But, uh, yeah. Lynn, final words? No, I'm blank. I really need to pee. <laughs> right. So I'm, I'm, I'm like uh, moving around in my chair. <laughs> all right. With that being said, Lynn needs to pee. We need to stop. Uh, I want to say thank you all very much for listening in to the Antpod. Um, the Antpod releases new episodes every Wednesday. Hopefully we continue to do that after having a small break. And if there's a topic you would like to hear about, send a message to the Antpod Instagram. And with that, you'll hear more from us at the Antpod next week.